Well, hello, welcome back. Oh, I'm such an amateur. Welcome back to a rebuilding a kick-ass life. And I wish I had a prettier backdrop, but hey, it is what it is. I'm an amateur. I don't even know if my lighting is great. I think my video, I think my voice is great, like the sound, but I'm just doing the best that I can with what I've got. And you guys, I am here for the people clearly because I keep wanting to get away from talking about narcissists and I keep getting sucked back in. And so on my Instagram, by the way, follow me on Instagram at Mama Moines. I have, um, I have a lot of videos already here on, um, growing up with a, you know, a narcissistic parent or being in a narcissistic abusive relationship. And the comment that I received on my Instagram, um, I think it was last week was, I have been in a relationship for many years and now I'm finally feeling um, exhausted mentally, emotionally, physically with having to play the game. Can you help me? <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm really impressed actually that you realize that you're playing the game because sometimes it takes a really long time to get to that point of playing the game. And what I mean by that is in the beginning, if you're in a narcissistic uh, relationship with a narcissist, romantic relationship, or it actually can even be a friend, um, you start to think that it's all your fault that you've, because of something that, they've done has elicited a reaction from you and then they get really upset over your reaction. And so you start thinking, well, maybe it's me, maybe it's my fault, maybe I need to try harder, maybe I'm not working at this hard enough. Uh, maybe, you know, I'm not looking at the situation clearly or, you know, they have a point. And you start thinking that it's you. And then as time goes on and more and more situations happen, you start to sort of realize that, wait a minute, it's not me. Like that is fucked up. The way you reacted to that or the way you think about that or how you handled that specific situation. But what happens is when you are truthful and you express your feelings and you express your opinion, they don't like it. And because they don't like it, a lot of times what will come out of that is a narcissistic rage or a complete overreaction or you get the silent treatment or you get punished for whatever reason and so you start wising up to the fact that you need to start playing the game and that really you guys is self-preservation it's like a survival mechanism and you start playing the game because you know that by doing so, you're going to actually enable them to, although it's a false narrative, you're going to enable them to be able to get through the day without having to explode, get angry, or give you the silent treatment or punish you in any way, shape, or form. And so it's like when you're a child, you know that when you're a child and if you clean your room or you get good grades or anything that elicits a positive reinforcement from your parents, you want to keep doing more of that because that feels good and that makes them happy. And then you get, you know, positive interaction. It's sort of the same thing when you are in any kind of a relationship with somebody that has narcissistic tendencies or narcissistic traits. Whatever you can do to appease them, you're going to do, even though inwardly, innately, you know, that's not right. That's messed up. But in order for you to get through your day or your week or your month or whatever, without having um, turmoil, chaos, tears, you just do whatever you can to get through the day. And oftentimes that is just throwing them breadcrumbs, appeasing them in any way that you can, stroking their ego, even though you know deep down inside that this feels gross. This just doesn't feel right. This is not right. But until you're at the point where you're ready to walk away from that friendship or from that relationship, or sometimes it can even be a sibling or a parent, 
until you hit that point or until you hit your rock bottom, you really have no choice but to play the game. You have no choice but to do whatever you can do for that self-preservation. Maybe it's an exit strategy. Um, but I get it when you say that you feel exhausted because what happens so many times when you are silenced, because you lose your authentic self. You, you can't be yourself authentically. You can't express your feelings. You can't express your emotions. You can't express what you really think about a situation. Because if you do that, like I said, it's it, it could lead into a complete um, eruption. And so you start losing your authenticity, you start losing your voice, you start losing um, who you really are at your core. And it becomes exhausting because when you do that, you're not, you're avoiding the battle that you probably would have with that person, but deep down inside, you're creating that war within yourself. So you avoid the battle because you're just being all yes, you know, but you're creating this war inside yourself because you know who you are, you know your values, you know, who you are at your core, yet everything you're doing, everything you're, you're saying goes against everything you believe in. And that's a struggle. And some people have cognitive dissonance um, uh, where you are, you know, you're acting one way, but you really are believing it, it to be a different way. And so I'm sort of proud of that person that said I'm physically, mentally, emotionally exhausted because I am so over just appeasing them. Um, and that is what you're doing. And but but because you are exhausted, you know that um, it is it is not that you, you 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 know the difference between right and wrong and you know that it's not you and you're tired. You're just tired of doing everything you can to make it okay so that you can just have a little bit of peace in your life and oh my god i get it i get it i get it more than you know and so i don't know like can i help you all i can say is um as we get older we have less and less time to put up with people like that because we just want to live a peaceful, um, happy, contentful, meaningful, fulfilling life. And those people will suck the energy right out of you. Um, but I also understand that so many people can't just leave. And you know, one of the questions that I get all the time is, well, why stay so long? And why don't they just leave? And if it's that bad, well, because a lot of times you guys, it's not that bad. A lot of times there's really, really good times and it is a roller coaster. And that's probably why this poor girl feels exhausted because it's a roller coaster ride. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. And you just never know when you're going to get the next up. But you do know enough that if you appease them and you give them those breadcrumbs and stroke their ego, that you will have more of the up days than you will the down days. And so that's why people stay because the good can be, in some cases, the good can be really, really, really good, really good. And you stay because you just keep holding out for that next good day until the bad days, the ratio doesn't work anymore. And the bad days outweigh this cat is driving me crazy. Oh, 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 <laughs> I'm such an amateur. God. Oh my God, I just lost, the camera almost fell over. <sighs> okay. I think it's time for me to cut this off. The bad days eventually outweigh the good days. And for most people, that is the sign that I need to get out. I would rather live under a bridge. Staying here for one more day is the worst thing that I can do. Because the longer you stay, even though you know, cognitively you know, you're you're okay, you're a good person, they are messed up, you realize that they have narcissistic tendencies or narcissistic personality disorder or whatever it is, even though you do realize that, it does still eat away at you. 
and you do start to lose a little bit of yourself. And I get it, sometimes you've got kids, you don't have a job, you don't have an income, you've gotta figure things out and sometimes it takes time. I get it, I get it. Trust me, there is nothing better than having peace in your life, nothing better, nothing. So outweigh what, what is the cost of staying there? versus the cost of maybe, you know, losing your family home, or I mean, I don't know, everyone's in a different situation, but um, there will come a time, I believe, especially if you are truly with somebody that's narcissistic, that the, um, the ratio just doesn't work anymore. The bad days will outweigh the good days, and uh, you look forward to nothing but just peace. So don't be hard on yourself. You're not alone. So many people go through this. Um, and find a support system and no matter what keep reminding yourself it's not you it's not you okay hope that helps and hopefully we can start talking about more about how to rebuild our kick-ass lives rather than going back to dealing with ugh, people and there's so many energy vampires out there, you guys, so many. Let's try to avoid them because that's the only way that we can truly get on the path of um, creating the best lives for ourselves. Okay, that's it. Have a good night. Bye.